Hey guys, it's time for video number two on how to uh, create a player character. Started out with sort of the basics last video, choosing your race and choosing your class. And these are important because both of those choices will influence what we're getting ready to talk about, which is your ability scores. Give me a second. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is where do these numbers come from here? These are your ability scores and the six abilities of strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. This is the first set of numbers that sort of make you go, what is this all about? How do you get them? What do they mean, etc. All right, first thing I wanted to show you is this very important table here called Ability Scores and Modifiers. The numbers on the left column under the header score are a range of numbers between one and 30. And then the modifiers on the right, from anywhere from negative five up to plus 10, those are what you add to any sort of check that requires something within an ability. So for example, if your ability uh, score for strength is 13, you would look here, see this as 13, so you would add plus one to any strength check. So you roll your 20-sided dice and it lands on 11, you would say, I get 12, 11 plus one. So that's kind of how those work and why they matter. So that's the ability score and the modifier but where do you get where do you get this number from to start with? I mean, you use the table to determine what the modifier is, but where do you get the score from? So there's a couple of places. One is called the uh, what people tend to call the standard array. Um, it is a standard set set of scores, and it's right here in the book. And basically, you assign rather than rolling for them, you assign a 15, 14, 13. Uh, 12, 10, and an 8. To, and those are six, uh, obviously six scores, and you would sign, assign them to each of your abilities here, depending upon kind of what it says about your class. For example, if you're rolling uh, a paladin, you know, strength is most important, so you would put your 15 on strength, so that it'd give you the highest modifier there. Next is Charisma. So you put your 14th on Charisma. I know this because that's the character I just created. But all of that information is within the book under the race and the class that you pick. Uh, sometimes a race gives you a benefit. So if you're creating a Dwarven something, Dwarves are very strong, right? They're very resilient, and so they get a bonus to their uh, constitution. I think. Yes, I was right. Dwarves get plus two to their constitution. So no matter what you roll, uh, or should you choose the standard array, um, you would add two to that for a constitution under dwarves. That's why I started this set of videos with choosing your race and your class first. So let's do it real quick on the sheet. Now we're going to go ahead and start filling out our player sheet, and I'm actually going to be creating a half-elf paladin. And so I'm going to start out filling it out up here. I'm actually going to start out building a level one uh, half-elf paladin. So uh, the class is paladin. The level is one, and the race is going to be half-elf which is a half human, half elf. And this is actually a character that I am creating for um, a new campaign that I'm entering. I'm actually creating the character for the campaign at level five. But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna keep it at level one, just to keep it as simple as possible. So there's some things that we're gonna get from the fact that this is a paladin, and some things that we're gonna get from the fact that this character is a half elf. But first and foremost, I will list the, the ability modifiers. So first of all, there's two ways to get to your ability scores. You can roll, which is always fun, where you take 
four six-sided dice, keep the highest three, add that up, and that's one of your ability scores. Or you can choose the standard set, the 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and eight, which I mentioned earlier, and then lay them out there. So what I do is I get a blank sheet of paper, and then I roll, uh, you know, so I would take the one out, so that's a 13. Take the two out, so that's a 14. Roll this six times. And then roll one last time. These are pretty terrible rolls. Okay, so that is five, six, seven. So that could be my block of of ability scores right there, 13, 14, 8, 9, 13, and 7. But there's no rule that says you have to stick with that, so you can roll again and see what you come up with. pretty good. I'm going to probably stick with that if I was just going to roll 13, 8, 11, 17, 12, and 11. So I would order them from highest to lowest. 17, 13, 12, two 11s, and an 8. And that's what I would then go back to my, sorry, so you can see that. 17, 13, 12, 11, 11, and 8. That would go back to my table in the player's handbook. I would look at the table of modifiers there, and 17 is plus 3, 13 is plus 1, 12 is plus 1, 11 is 0, and 8 is minus 1. And so those are my ability scores and my ability modifiers. I would then go back to my sheet, and I would look up Paladin and Half Elf. And I know for a fact that Paladin, I already know this, um, you would apply the highest score to strength. So for strength, I would put uh, my 17 here and say plus three. It's just like that. And then next is Charisma. So I would put my 13 there and put plus one. And then I probably put, maybe for dexterity, I would put my 12 there, plus 1. Uh, for constitution, I would put an 11 and 0. For intelligence, I would put my 11 and 0. And then for wisdom, I would put my 8 and minus 1. And now we have our ability scores and our ability modifiers. Just like that. Okay? And then we'll go back to the book and find out, okay, based now on the fact that it's a paladin and a half-elf, what can we add? Uh, what are their strengths by virtue of their race? What are their strengths by virtue of their class? Okay, so we're looking at the half-elf now, and it says half-elf traits. Your half-elf character has some qualities in common with elves and some that are unique to half-elves. Ability score increase. Your charisma score increases by two. And two other ability scores of my choice increase by one. So if my charisma increases by two. That's why I always use an eraser. I look at charisma, which is right now at 13, so it increases by two which means it increases to 15, which means my Charisma modifier is no longer a plus one. At 15, it becomes plus two. And it's, it, remember it also said two more of my choosing. Um, if I move my, two more of my choosing go up by one. If I move my strength up to an 18, that means it's a plus four. I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I want him to be a bruiser. 
So 18, so I'm gonna move my strength up. And I'm also gonna move my constitution up. I don't like having zero. I wanna be able to get a little bit of bonus, a little bit of push on my hit points. So I'm gonna make that constitution a 12 which means my ability score, instead of being a zero for constitution, I get a plus one. That means a little bit. And then we'll look at the paladin. All right, so when I'm looking at the paladin, what I really see here is that what I'm proficient in, my skills, which are sort of listed here on this side, uh, but I also see over here ability score improvements. Now, I won't get any bonus improvements to my ability scores until I reach fourth level. So right now, we're set. So we now have a half elf paladin level one with a strength modifier of plus four, dexterity of plus one, constitution of plus one, intelligence of zero, wisdom of negative one, and charisma of plus two. So in the next video, we'll keep filling this out. We'll talk about uh, what these do to your skills over here. Also, we'll talk about proficiency bonus and we'll probably stop with that one for video three. Wow, okay, that went a lot longer than five minutes, so uh, I apologize for that, but it, even though all we did was fill out the ability scores and the modifiers, I think there was a lot more to it than I suspected. I'm glad we did it. Uh, so hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully it kind of lets you know where those numbers come from, and then you see the table in the book, and I put the page number in the video for the player's handbook where that table is so that you can see it yourself. If you like the video, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up. Uh, let me know in the comments what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see. Uh, give me some feedback so that I can continue to improve these videos that hopefully help uh, you guys embrace Dungeons and & Dragons. And uh, until next time, have fun.